Hello there, this is Randil. Welcome again. In this video today, I will let you walk through some important rules of the uses of the comma. The comma is one of the most important punctuation marks in writing. There are so many uses of the comma, but I have taken only 19 of them. If you learn how to use this comma accurately in your writing, I'm quite sure you will be able to enhance your writing immensely. In the first video in this series, I have already covered very important points about the full stop or the period. If you haven't watched my first video in this series, you may use the above link on the screen. Then grab that link and watch that video until the end. Then you will be able to grasp a better understanding about the users of the period or the full stop. Without a further ado, let's get into the lesson. Punctuation. Under this topic, there are 14 punctuation marks. These 14 punctuation marks are crucial in your writing. For this reason, you should know how to use them accurately in your writing. Then only you can enhance your writing skill. You can give some certain information about your writing to the reader of your writing. During my first video in this series, we already discussed some important information about the usage of the period or the full stop. And in this lesson, we will only be looking at some rules of the uses of the comma. Now it's time to look at the introduction of the comma. The comma of the punctuation marks in English. This one is perhaps the most misused. And it is no wonder there are lots of rules about comma usage. Now I will let you walk through what a comma is. While a period ends a sentence, a comma indicates a smaller break. It separates words, clauses or ideas within a sentence. There are so many uses of comma. Out of them, I have taken only 19 of them. Let's look at the first one. Commas with lists. There are various lists with various elements. We are going to look at all the types of lists available in English language. Let's look at more details about all these lists. When you have a list that contains more than two elements, use commas to separate them. Look at the first example. Julie loves ice cream, books and kittens. So here, ice cream is the first element in the list. The second element is books and the third element kittens. These are the items or the elements in the list of what Julie loves. Actually, Julie loves first thing ice cream, the second thing books and kittens. And remember, if you want to separate them, all these elements in the list, you use a comma. I use the first comma here because I just separate the first noun ice cream from books using this comma over here. And the next one after books, I have used another comma and before and kittens. Therefore, remember to separate the elements in the list, I have used two commas. One is between ice cream and books. The other one is between books and and kittens. There's a special word for this comma, the final comma before and. We are going to look at separately about this comma. Therefore, I'm not going to explain to you this comma now. And let's look at the second example. For dinner, I had soup, fish, chicken, dessert, and coffee. You see, I have used how many commas here? The first one, soup and fish between them. And the second comma between fish and chicken. The second comma over here. And the third comma over here. And the fourth comma over here. Now tell me how many elements are there in this list. The first element soup. The second element fish. And the third element chicken. And the fourth element dessert. And the final element and coffee. Therefore, we use commas to separate each element in the list. Therefore, remember... This list is made up of nouns. Ice cream, books, kittens, soup, fish, chicken, dessert, and coffee. All these are nouns. Therefore, there are two lists. In the first sentence, there is one list. In the second sentence, there is another list. Let's move on to learn about the next. John runs, exercises, and plays basketball. Here there are three elements in the list. Runs, exercises, and place. These are not nouns, but these are verbs. And also remember, 
we can write a list of words separating each element by a comma between runs and exercises i have used one comma over here exercises and plays there's another comma over here and remember at the end of this sentence i have used a period that is a separate punctuation mark therefore remember if you have verbs in a list to separate each element you can use a comma and let's look at the second example tony ran towards me fell yelled and fainted how many verbs are there ran is the first one you see i have used a comma the second verb fell there is another comma and yelled another comma and fainted there are four elements in this verb list ran fell yelled and fainted hence this list is made up of verbs now we already talked about two types of lists the first one which was made up of nouns and the second one which was made up of verbs let's move on to the third category the poster depicted a brown haired blue eyed child wearing a red denim shirt here you see i have used one comma here to separate brown haired it is an adjective blue eyed it is also an adjective this is the noun so i have used two adjectives this one first one and this is the second one to describe or the qualify the noun child since there are two adjectives in the list i used one comma to separate them very simple now let's move on to the second example this is a heavy bulky box bulky is an adjective heavy is an adjective there are two adjectives to describe the box so to separate adjectives then i used a comma between heavy and bulky therefore this list is made up of adjectives there are now three types of lists let's look at the fourth one i met harry we went for a swim together and afterwards harry went home i met harry is an independent clause we went for a swim together is another independent clause and afterwards harry went home is a complete sentence is another independent clause now you need to remember we use commas to separate all these independent clauses how many clauses are there this is the first one and this is the second clause and the third clause the all these are independent clauses therefore to separate them you can use commas i put one comma over here and the second comma over here and let's look at the second example i like your son which is an independent clause i might even love him this is another independent clause but he is not a very good soccer player and this is a another independent clause to join these three independent clauses i used two commas i like your son then i put a comma here i might even love him there is another comma here but he is not a very good soccer player at the end so you see the period therefore you need to remember this list is made up of independent clauses now the final list the car smashed into the wall flipped on its roof slid along the road and finally stopped against a tree the car smashed into the wall into the wall is a place flipped on to its roof along the road finally stopped against a tree all these are phrases therefore to separate phrases in a list i used comma one comma over here and there's another comma here and one more comma here finally you have the period or the full stop look at the second example the dog leapt into the air snatched the frisbee in its mouth landed and ran off into the leap into the air is a phrase and this is another phrase snatched the frisbee in its mouth landed is a verb ran off into the forest it's another phrase therefore to separate these phrases in the list i used commas the first comma here between them and the next comma is here and the third comma is here hence this list is made up of phrases that's all about the first use of commas with lists now let's move on to learn about the second use of the comma second one is the serial comma or we call it oxford comma when you are listing three or more items three or more items commas should separate each element of the list 
However, the final comma, the one that comes before the end, is optional. This comma is called the serial comma or the Oxford comma. Let's try to understand what it says. Simon needs bread, milk and butter at the grocery store. Then where you can find the serial comma? Do you call this one the serial comma? This is between bread and milk? No, this is the first comma. And do you call this one the serial comma or the Oxford comma? Yes, it is because it is located between milk and, and butter. The one before the last, the element, and the last element. Between them, we use the final comma, which is called the serial comma or the Oxford comma. Therefore, we call this final comma or the last comma in the list. We call this comma as Oxford comma or the serial comma. Now, let's look at the second example. Simon needs bread, milk, and butter at the grocery store without serial comma. So, which one is the last element this is the last element and the element before last is milk i haven't used any comma because this is optional if you want you can use a serial comma or if you don't like to use it you can just leave it without a comma remember this serial comma is very important if you are writing something to the american audience you can just use the serial comma if you are just referring something to british audience therefore you need to remember that you don't use the serial comma and I have another couple of examples. I still have to buy a gift. Pack the suitcases and arrange for someone to water the plants while we are at the wedding. Where is the serial comma? You have to find the last element in the list. Arrange for someone to water the plants. That is the last element in the list. Pack the suitcase is the one before the final or the last element. Therefore, you can use a comma here before and. Or if you are just talking to British audience, you can just remove the comma and write the sentence, same sentence without a comma. You see, this example, I still have to buy a gift. I have used the first comma, pack the suitcases. Here we don't have any comma here. I have just omitted the serial comma and arrange for someone to water the plants while we are at the wedding. This rule is very important. When you are just talking about the serial comma, you need to remember that use of this comma is optional. Both ways are correct. If you like, you can use serial comma. If you don't like to use it, you can just remove it. Let's move on to the third use. Commas with but. Use a comma before the coordinating conjunction, but. What is the coordinating conjunction here? But. If it is joining two independent clauses. I repeat again, if it is joining two independent clauses. I'll give you an example. Cleo is a good singer, but she is an even better dancer. Take this example. Cleo is a good singer, but she is an even better dancer. Okay, now I'm going to tell you what an independent clause is. This is the independent clause. Cleo is a good singer. Okay? And there is another independent clause. She is an even better dancer. Okay? How many independent clauses are here? There are two independent clauses. And what is the coordinating conjunction here? The coordinating conjunction here is but. Therefore, I have used but to separate one independent clause from another. And there's a mistake here. I haven't used a comma before this coordinating conjunction but. Therefore, this statement is wrong. Look at the second example, the same example, but there's a difference. You can notice here, there's a comma before the coordinating conjunction, but. And also remember, this is an independent clause. Cleo is a good singer, I already explained to you. And also this is a, another independent clause, I explained to you already. Therefore, to join these two independent clauses, I use this coordinating conjunction, but. And you need to remember, according to this rule, we have to use a comma before this coordinating conjunction. And remember, this coordinating conjunction is only joining two independent clauses. Therefore, this statement is correct. I'll give you another couple of examples. The first one, I wrote an article today, but my article was full of grammar mistakes. You see here, I wrote an article today, it's a complete sentence. It is called an independent clause. And there is another clause here. My article was full of grammar mistakes. And what is the coordinating conjunction here? But. 
and I haven't put a comma here. Therefore, this sentence is completely wrong. Look at the same example. And what is the difference here? I have used a comma. I wrote an article today, but my article was full of grammar mistakes. And also I used this comma here to separate the independent clause and the next independent clause joined together by but and before but I use the period. Therefore, this statement is correct. Now let's move forward to learn about the fourth function. Commas with and. When correcting a comma is applies by adding and. That is when joining two independent clauses with and as a coordinating conjunction. Put the comma before and. What is and here? And is a coordinating conjunction. This and can work as joining this and can work as a joining tool. Therefore, I can join two independent clauses using and. Therefore, remember, if you use and as a coordinating conjunction to join two independent clauses, there is a rule. You need to add a comma before and, which is the coordinating conjunction. Take this example for better understanding. He traveled to France on Thursday and she followed on Friday. Okay, what is the independent clause here? You see here, he traveled to France on Thursday. This is the independent clause. She followed on Friday is the second independent clause. And here and is the coordinating conjunction. You see here, I have used a comma. I give you another example. It rained yesterday and it didn't rain today. It rained yesterday is the first independent clause. It didn't rain today is the second independent clause and is the coordinating conjunction. Therefore, you have to use the comma over here. This is very simple. But remember, when you have a list that contains only two items, don't use a comma before the and. And you need to remember that comma splice means mistakes that you do in relation to the use of comma. My dog Charlie is cute. Here you can see the comma and is smart. Therefore, according to the rule given here, when there are two items, you see the first item here and the second item here in the list, we don't usually use a comma. Therefore, this statement is wrong. Look at the second example. The same example, but without a comma. My dog Charlie is cute and is smart. There is no comma. There are only two elements in the list. Therefore, this statement is correct. Now, it's time to look at the fifth rule. Avoiding comma splices. When you want to join two independent clauses, you need a conjunction or a semicolon. A comma alone isn't strong enough to join them. This kind of mistake is called a comma splice. Look at this example. We were out of milk. I went to the store. Here, the first independent clause. This is the second independent clause. And I have used this comma. This comma, according to this rule, is not strong enough to join them. Therefore, there are two ways that you can use either a conjunction, coordinating conjunction, or a semicolon. Look at this one. You can fix a comma splice by adding a conjunction or changing the comma to semicolon. There are two ways, as I said. Take this example. We were out of milk, so I went to the store. We were out of milk is one independent clause. I went to the store is another independent clause. I have used this coordinating conjunction to join these two independent clauses and before this coordinating conjunction so, I used a comma. This is the first way of eliminating or avoiding this comma splice. Take this example also, but I haven't used a comma here. Instead of comma, I have used a semicolon. We were out of milk. We were out of milk. Then I used the semicolon to separate from this independent clause. I went to the store. So you need to remember there are two ways that you can avoid this comma splice. Remember if there are two independent clauses, if you want to join them, you need to use a coordinating conjunction. And before that coordinating conjunction, you need to use a comma. So if you want to replace this conjunction and comma or comma itself alone, you can use this semicolon. It is a very important point. Or you can simply write the two independent clauses as separate sentences. Look at this example. We were out of milk. 
Here you see there is no comma. I have used only a full stop. I went to the stop. There are three ways that you can write the same. The first one, if you use a comma that is incorrect. This is incorrect. So instead of using this comma, you can use a coordinating conjunction plus comma. This comma should be placed immediately after the first independent clause and before the coordinating conjunction. And if you want to write using the semicolon, you just replace comma and the coordinating conjunction, these two together with this semicolon. And if you want to write these two independent clauses separately as independent clauses or separate sentences, you use just two full stop. One over here to mark the end of this first statement and there is another full stop to mark the end of the second statement. All right, that's all about avoiding command splices. Now let's look at the sixth use of commands. Commands with relative clauses. A clause that is non-restrictive offers extra information about something you have mentioned in a sentence. But that information is not essential for identifying the thing that you are talking about. Non-restrictive clauses are usually introduced by which or who and should be set off by commands. Take this example. Roy's Cafe is the place that we are talking about in this statement. And which Sam recommended is the additional information that I use to describe Roy's Cafe. Actually, the part within bracket is additional. It's not essential to identify this Roy's Cafe. We know already which cafe we are talking about. It is a very specific place. And if you just remove which Sam recommended that part itself, it is the non-restrictive relative clause. We just remove that one. And you see Roy's Cafe is a fantastic restaurant. This statement without this additional information, the sentence can stand alone. Therefore, this information is additional. Or if you want, you can just remove this additional information. But anyway, if you want to include this additional information in this statement, you need to use commas. One comma over here and the next comma over here. And the parts within these two commas are taken as non-restrictive clause, which gives additional information. Think about this one. My wife, whom I love dearly, is a brilliant physicist. If you say my wife, we know already which wife you are talking about. We have only one wife, therefore, we just talk about one wife. Okay, my wife. Whom I love dearly is the class, non-restrictive class, non-defining class we call it. Therefore, I have to use this comma here and another comma here. If you want to remove the parts within bracket, you just remove. Then you say my wife is a brilliant physicist. Very simple. Then if you want to add this additional information, since this is non-restrictive, you have to use commas. That's very simple. Now, take this example. The cafe that Sam recommended is a fantastic restaurant. That Sam recommended is not additional information because we don't know which cafe we are talking about. If I say the cafe is a fantastic restaurant, there are so many cafes in, in this area even. So we don't know which one you are talking about. Therefore, we have to use a defining clause or restrictive clause. Therefore, that Sam recommended is a restrictive clause. You cannot use commas. This sentence is incorrect. Then what is the correct statement? The cafe that Sam recommended is a fantastic restaurant. You see, the cafe, we don't know which one we are talking about, but I just use restrictive clause to define it. Then we know already which one we are talking about, the one that Sam recommended. Therefore, we don't use commas. This is a correct statement. It's time to learn about the seventh use, commas with apposite. An appositive is a noun or noun phrase that refers to the same thing as another noun in the same statement. Often, the appositive provides additional information about the noun or helps to distinguish it in some way. If you could remove the appositive without changing the meaning of the sentence, it is said to be non-essential and should be set off with commas. If the appositive is necessary, it is said to be essential and should not be set off with commas. Let's try to understand what I said. Non-essential appositives. Here, additional information. You need to just remember this 
all the information within commas is not important it's not essential therefore we call them non essential apostrophe take this example first one my partner is a wonderful cook it is a complete sentence then if you want to mention the name of the partner you say angela my partner and angela are referred to the same person therefore my partner is angela since this is an additional information we just use commas you see there are two commas here one here and one there the between commas what stands is additional we call them non essential apostrophe look at the second example the painter one of the city's most promising young artists began showing his work in galleries before he was 16 the painter and one of the city's most promising young artists this is additional information if you just remove that part the painter began showing his work in galleries before he was 16 therefore we use two commas here look at the third example chocolate my favorite treat always makes me feel better after a bad day chocolate and my favorite treat refer to the same thing therefore this information is additional i use commas these are called non essential appositives okay now let's look at these essential appositives and let's try to understand what's the difference between them at galan poems poem and the ravan the ravan is a different thing it's a poem it cannot be regarded as non essential appositives therefore this part is very essential and we don't use commas and let's look at the second example here the detective sherlock holmes is one of the literature's greatest sleuths to specify this common noun detective we use sherlock holmes without this sherlock holmes part the two part name we cannot identify which detective we are talking about therefore this is essential and we don't use commas now it's time to look at the eighth use now it's time to have a look at the eighth use commas with introductory phrases a comma normally follows a participle phrase that introduces a sentence there are two types of participle phrases the first one present participle phrase and the second one past participle phrase i'll give you two examples so that you can have a better understanding about these participle phrases and the comma look at this first example this is the first example and what do you call this one this is the present participle phrase and kate raced out of the house is the main statement okay now i am going to read the full statement grabbing her umbrella kate raced out of the house grabbing her umbrella is the present participle phrase and it is the first part of the sentence kate raced out of the house is the second part of the sentence but which one is the main statement kate raced out of the house and grabbing her umbrella is the present participle phrase and this statement starts with a present participle phrase and this phrase is followed by the main statement therefore to separate these two elements i use a comma you see here the comma remember if a statement starts with a present participle phrase and it is followed by the main statement to separate them we use a comma and let's look at the second example confused by his sister's sudden change in mood jill stayed quiet which one is the participle phrase okay this is the participle phrase we call it past participle phrase confused by his sister's sudden change in mood that is the past participle phrase and this is statement the total sentence starts with a participle phrase and this is the main statement jill stayed quiet therefore to separate these two elements in the sentence i use a comma here the comma when an adverbial phrase begins a sentence it is often followed by a comma i'll give you some examples the first one after the show this is the adverbial phrase and this statement starts with an adverbial phrase and this is the main statement clear will be signing autographs therefore after the show is an adverbial phrase and this statement starts with that therefore i use a comma to separate them okay this is the first element this is the second element to separate them i used a comma behind the building this is also an adverbial phrase 
and this is the main statement there is enough space to park two limousines therefore i used a comma the comma is here without knowing why this is an adverbial phrase without knowing why i crossed the room and looked out the window this full statement starts with an adverbial phrase to separate them i used a comma the comma is here now let's look at the fourth example in 1816 life was very different therefore in 1816 is an adverbial phrase so i have used a comma to separate the adverbial phrase from the main statement suddenly this is also same this is an adverbial phrase a frightened black cat sprang from the shadow and to separate this adverbial phrase from the main statement i used a comma the comma is here all right that's all about commas with introductory phrases let's look at the ninth one when writing a date in month day year format set of the year with commas look at this format here we first write the month then we write the day and the year and set of the year with commas so we have to put a comma here i give you two examples july 4th 1776 was an important day in american history let's look at the format of this date okay you see here the month and the day and the year then set of the year with comma so you see i have put a comma here and i have put another comma because i have taken this one as an adverbial phrase to start this statement july 4th 1776 was an important day in american history remember since this date appears at the beginning of the statement i have put another comma here and this comma you need to remember that always we separate the month day from the year it's very simple when you write the date in any piece of writing you should follow the same format look at the second example i was born on sunday may 12 1968 and within bracket i have given a different thing i was born on may 12 1968 let's look at the difference between these two sentences the one here without the bracket and the one with brackets and i was born on sunday you see here i have put the day the day of the week this is the normal format month and the day and the year this comma is been already and also you need to remember that if you put any day of the week then there should be a comma that's why i have used a comma here and here also same you should set off the year with commas this is at the normal comma that we always use to separate remember here sunday is given in this statement sunday is missing therefore you can write in a different way i was born on this is the preposition and there is no comma may 12th then this is the normal comma i think it's clear so you can use either ways when you write a date in any piece of writing if you are using the day month year day month year format however commas are unnecessary here month day format here day month format applications are due by 31st december 2024 therefore here 31st is the day month year there are no commas if you want to follow this format you need to remember that you don't use any comma use a comma between a day of the week and a date look at this one on tuesday this is the day of the week if you have any day of the week Remember after the day of the week you have to use a comma this is the comma and april 13 this is the normal comma that you should remember that set off the year with this comma at 3 o'clock again there is another comma because this is taken as an adverbial phrase so we use a comma there will be a meeting for all staff this is the main statement okay i read the whole statement again on tuesday april 13 at 3 o'clock there will be a meeting for all staff Remember how many commas are there? There are three commas here up to this point because this comma remember day of the week and this is set off the year and this comma after an adverbial phrase because this is statement start with an adverbial phrase. So we need to remember we have to put a comma just after the adverbial phrase since it appears at the beginning of the statement. Now let's look at the second example. Please join us on Saturday, June tenth. 2023 for the marriage of Annie and Michael remember saturday is the day of the week this is the date the month day format and the year how many commas are here there is a one comma and there is another comma 
So I have taken this one as an adverbial phrase. The final comma I have just used here for the marriage of the annual Michael. It's very clear. When you are referencing only a month and year, you don't need a comma. Okay, take this example. The region experienced record rainfall in March 1999. You see here, month and the year. There is no comma. It's very simple. Okay, that's all about commas with dates. Now it's time to look at the 10th use commas with coordinate adjective. Okay, let's look at how we can identify coordinate adjectives and non-coordinate adjectives. Okay, let's try to understand what these coordinate adjectives are. When multiple adjectives modify a noun to an equal degree, they are said to be coordinate and should be separated by commas. One way to tell whether the adjectives are coordinate is to try switching the order of them. If the sentence still sounds natural, the adjectives are coordinate. I think you need to understand this concept better. Therefore, I have given you these four examples. Okay, now let's read the first example. That man is pompous, self-righteous, annoying idiot. What is the noun here? Okay, that man is the subject. And this section can be regarded as the predicate. You see here? That means this whole section as the predicate I have used to describe that man. First one, pompous. It is an adjective. Self-righteous and annoying. How many adjectives are here? Uh, this is the first adjective, this is the second adjective, and this is the third adjective. These three adjectives can be used to describe this noun, idiot. Then who is an idiot? Okay, can be referred to this man. Therefore, if we have multiple adjectives. So coordinate adjective means if you want to switch the order. For an example, if you want to take this one, look at the second example here, so that you can understand that better. I have taken this self-righteous as the first adjective and this annoying is the second adjective and pompous is the third adjective. You see, I have switched the order. These two statements sound natural. I read both together. Now try to understand. That man is a pompous, self-righteous, annoying idiot. Second example, that man is a self-righteous, annoying, pompous idiot. These two examples sound natural. Therefore, these adjectives are coordinate adjectives to the same equal degree. Therefore, I have to use a comma to separate. Okay? So, all these commas. You see how many commas I have used? There are three adjectives and I have used two commas. The first one between pompous and self-righteous and the second one between self-righteous and annoying. And between the adjective and noun, there is no comma. Remember, this is the last adjective and this is the noun that we have used all these three adjectives to qualify and the second one also same so you have to use commas okay i have given uh, the third and the fourth example they are the same but only you see the difference between these two with the uh, order of the coordinate adjectives the sweet scintillating aroma of cinnamon buns fill the kitchen okay this one is the first adjective this is the second adjective and this is the noun that i have used these two adjectives to describe same scintillating sweet aroma this is the noun that i have used these adjectives to describe and the order i have already changed sweet this is the first adjective and this is the second adjective in the second example and this is the second adjective and this is the first already switched the order of the adjectives these are called coordinate adjectives therefore i have used a comma i think it's very clear if multiple adjectives are used but are not coordinate, remember there are coordinate adjectives and uncoordinate adjectives. That is, if one of them is more closely related to the noun being modified than the other, and thus they sound unnatural. If the order is changed, don't separate them with a comma. Look at this example. Okay, there are three examples here. The first one is incorrect. We'll see how, and and this is also incorrect. And this, the last statement, is the only one which is correct. Do you understand why these uh, first two examples are incorrect? Let's look at them. Alright, first I will read the three statements for you. The first one, the adorable little boy was eating ice cream. The little adorable boy was eating ice cream. The adorable little boy was eating ice cream. The first one, the adorable little. This little describes 
the size of the boy. Therefore, we consider this adjective closely connected to this noun. Therefore, you cannot switch the order. This little should be closely connected to this noun. Therefore, you cannot take this one as the first adjective to describe the noun boy. Therefore, these two adjectives are not coordinate adjectives. They are not interchangeable. Therefore, this statement is wrong because only we use a comma with coordinate adjective. Look at the second one. We have already changed the order of the adjective. Therefore, this sentence is also incorrect. The adorable little boy was eating an ice cream is the last one which is the correct. You see, little boy is the last adjective and it is already closely connected to the noun. And adorable is the first adjective. Since they are not coordinate adjectives, I haven't used a comma. Therefore, the last statement is correct. I think it's clear. I think you have a clear idea about commas with coordinate adjectives. Now it's time to look at 11th use commas with interrupters and parenthetical elements. Interrupters are little thoughts that pop up in the middle of a sentence to show emotion, tone and emphasis. And parenthetical element is a place that adds extra information to the sentence but could be removed without changing the meaning of the sentence. Both interrupters and parenthetical elements should be set off with commas. I give you two examples. The weather I was happy to see was beginning to clear. And this statement is incorrect. Let's look at the second statement. The weather I was happy to see was beginning to clear. Why the first sentence is incorrect and the last sentence is correct? Let's look at the reason. The weather was beginning to clear. And I have given you additional information. I was happy to see. If you remove this one from the main statement, the main statement is still clear. Therefore, this part within bracket is regarded as a place which adds extra information to the sentence. Therefore, it should set off with commas. There is a comma here, there is another comma here. That's why the second sentence is correct. It can be regarded as a parenthetical element. Let's look at the next one. As seen, the first statement is wrong. And the second statement is correct. Uh, let's try to understand why the first one is incorrect and why the second one is correct. It was sadly the last day of camp. Sadly can be taken as an interrupter. It is just a small pop-up in the middle of a sentence. Therefore, you can, if you want, you can just remove that. It was the last day of camp. If you remove, sadly, it doesn't make any changes in the original statement. It was the last day of camp. So it can be regarded as an interrupter. Therefore, it should be set off with commas. You see one comma here and there is another comma here. I give you another two examples. Mary, unlike Annie, is very organized. Incorrect. Why there are no commas? Mary, unlike Annie, is very organized. You just remove this one. Mary is very organized. This is the place which adds extra information. Therefore, this place should be set off with commas. That is the reason. The first one is incorrect and the second one is correct. I think you have a clear and better understanding about commas with interrupters and parenthetical elements. Let's look at the 12 use. Commas between direct quotes and attributive text. I think first we need to understand what attributive text mean and direct quotes mean. An attributive text is a place like they said or she claimed that identifies the speaker or writer of a quote or piece of dialogue. Attributive text can come before, after, or even in the middle of a quote. Use a comma to separate attributive text from quotations. Look at that. Okay, let's look at these three examples. The professor remarked how attentive you have been today. This is the first example. Then what is, which one is regarded as the attributive tag? Okay, I just underlined the attributive tag of the first example. How attentive you have been today is the quote. This attribute trace is very important to identify the speaker. The speaker is the professor here. And the quotation is the exact words of the speaker. It's important. To separate these two elements, we use a comma. Comma is here. This is the attribute trace and this is the quotation. To separate these two elements, I use a comma. The second example, once you know the solution, this is the cot. And Tiffany said is the attribute tag. This is the the second part of the quotation. This is the first part of the quotation. This is the second part of the quotation. You see here the attributive tag 
appears in the middle of the statement. Therefore, to separate that one, we have to use commas. Uh, this is the first comma before the ending quotation mark, and there is another comma just after said. After the attributive part, this is the second part of the quotation. Therefore, remember, if the attributive tag appears in the middle of the statement, we use commas. Look at the third one. You have ice cream on your nose, my friend giggle. This is the attribute. Okay. To separate this one from the quote, we use a comma. You see, as I said in the introduction, the attribute phrase or the tag appears at the beginning in the first example. In the second example, it appears in the middle. And in the last example, attribute tag appears at the end of the statement. You see, if you have these three situations, you need how you can use commas. Let's look at the next one. If a quotation before an attribute tag ends in a question mark or exclamation point, however, there is no need for a comma. I think you need to understand it better. You see, the first statement is incorrect. This is incorrect. And the second statement is correct. These two examples are the same, but only we have different punctuation marks. That's why the first one is incorrect and the second one is correct. What is the difference? Only this comma here. Why it's comma? According to this theory, if a quotation before an attribute tag ends in a question mark. You see here, this is the exclamation point. This quotation ends in an exclamation point. Therefore, it is not necessary to put a comma. That is the reason the second statement is correct. Here there is no comma. I give you another two examples. Where did that spider come from? There is a question mark here at the end of the quote, and this is the attribute tag. It appears at the end of the statement. There is a comma here. That is the reason this statement is incorrect. Here, the reason why the second statement is correct, you don't have to use a comma because this quote ends in a question mark. Usually, when the quote ends in question mark or an exclamation point. We should not use a comma to separate the attribute tag and the call. Okay, I think uh, you have a clear idea about commas between direct quotes and attribute tags. And the next content in the next slide is closely connected with this content here. Therefore, uh, we will try to understand what we have here in the next slide. Thirteenth use of commas with quotation marks. In American English, commas always go before closing quotation marks. Okay, here are some examples. I just read the examples for you. Pass me that salt, said Matthew. The second example, if you knew that was good for you, you would sit down and finish that essay right now, my roommate said. And the third example, we are going down to the kitchen to help serve dinner, her mother called. There are three examples here. Here, let's try to understand what we have to do with the comma. Pass me the salt. You see the comma here? I have placed the comma just before the closing quotation mark. It is a double quotation. Remember this one double quotation because in American English they always use this double quotation. And the second example if you knew what was good for you and you would sit down and finish that essay right now. This is the end of the quotation. So I have used the comma just before the closing quotation mark. We are going down to the kitchen to help serve dinner and the comma. Then we use the double quotation. This is the ending. So here you need to understand only you have to use a comma just before the closing quotation mark. But in British English, however, uncoded punctuation typically follows the quotation marks. If you are writing for a British audience, put the comma after the closing quotation mark. Furthermore, British English tends to use single quotes. Furthermore, British English tends to use single quotes rather than the double quotation marks. I told you already. Uh, this is called a double quotation mark. In American English, we use this one, but in British English, we use only single quotation. And in British English, we use the comma just after the closing quotation mark. That means here. Okay. I think it's very clear. Let's move on to learn about the 14th content. Now let's jump into the 14th use. Commas with parentheses. Parentheses are used to give additional information to the reader. Information that might disrupt the flow of the sentence if written as a non-restrictive clause. Commas may be placed after the closing parenthesis, but not before either the opening or the closing parenthesis. Now let's try to understand what is written here. First one, it is a correct statement. First one, it says correct. After opening the new cookie tin, 
This is an adverbial phrase. I already told you that we need to add or place a comma after an adverbial phrase. Therefore, this comma is correct. Kim had a hard time to replace in the lead. Therefore, this statement is correct. And the second one also correct. Let's see. After opening the new cookie tin, so parenthesis, this round bracket. Within round bracket, you can find and eat in several of the cookies. It is a piece of additional information. Kim had a hard time replacing the lid. And according to the instruction given here, after the parenthesis, this closing parenthesis, closing round bracket, we have to use a comma. And this statement is correct. I give you another couple of examples. But these two are incorrect. This is also incorrect. And this one also incorrect. Let's find out why these statements are incorrect. According to the instruction here, before the opening parenthesis, we cannot use a comma. This comma is correct, but this one is wrong. So if you place a comma before the parenthesis, if you place a comma before the opening parenthesis, this statement is correct. And this statement is wrong. Let's look at the final one. After opening the new cookie tin, same the additional information within parenthesis. And also there is a mistake here. Before the closing round bracket, we cannot use or we cannot place a comma. Therefore, this statement is also incorrect. I think you have a clear idea about when you add additional information within parentheses where you need to place comma. Now, it's time to look at the 15th use. Commas with question tags. A question tag is a word or short phrase that is added to the end of a statement to turn it into a question. Writers often use question tags to encourage readers to agree with them. A question tag should be preceded by a comma. I'll give you one example. Let's look at the first one. These willow trees are beautiful, aren't they? Which one is the question tag? Okay, this is a question because you see there is a question mark at the end. And also this is the tag. In this part of the video, I'm not going to explain to you how we can form these tags. But here we are going to look at only the comma, the use of comma. Remember, this part is called a question tag. Therefore, I place already a comma before this tag. I give you another example. You didn't actually write a 600 page vampire romance novel, did you? Did you is the tag. So therefore, before the tag, I place a comma. I give another example. I know. Write. So write a tag. Therefore, this is the comma and you need to place a comma before the tag. I think you have a clear idea about how you can use commas with question tags. Now let's try to find out. 16th use commas with direct address. When addressing another person by name, set off the name with commas. For an example, mom, I cannot find my shoes. And you need to remember mom here is taken as a proper noun. So it is the name of your mom. But without saying the name of your mom, you can say mom. Therefore, you have to place a comma here. I give you another example. Cleo, there is someone on the phone for you. Cleo is the name that you are addressing someone. Therefore, you place a comma here. And third one, hello Chester. Same, so you just address someone. But hello is not a name, but anyway, you just address someone by this name. Hello. Therefore, you have to place a comma. All right, that's all about commas with direct address. Now, let's move on to learn about commas with as well as. You generally don't need a comma before the connective phrase as well as. However, if you want the element of a sentence introduced by as well as to be read as an interrupt or parenthetical, setting it off with a comma or pair of commas can communicate that. Take this example. Please proofread for grammatical mistakes as well as spelling. Here, as well as can be taken as a connective phrase. Therefore, we don't use a comma. And take this example. Spelling mistakes as well as grammatical errors are distracting to readers. You see here, as well as grammatical errors. Here I have used as well as to introduce something or introduce another element in the statement. Therefore, you have to use two commas here. All right, it's all about as well as. Now let's move on to learn about commas with such as. The phrase such as requires commas if it introduces a non-restrictive clause. Take this example. Coniferous trees such as pine and spruce do not drop their needles in winter. Here such as pine and spruce can be taken as to introduce another element but non-restrictive clause. It doesn't define the subject. Therefore, you can use 
commas here. You see one comma over here and another comma over here. If you want to remove this one, you can remove. The original sentence remains with the same sense. If such as introduces a restrictive clause, omit the commas. Take this example. Trees such as pine and spruce do not grow. They nails in the winter. Such as here functions as a restrictive clause. Therefore, we don't have to use. Therefore, we don't use commas. Okay. Now let's move on to 19th use. Commas with to. Using a comma before the adverb to is generally unnecessary, but not incorrect. I like bananas too. There's no comma. I too like bananas. There's no comma. Setting to off with commas can add emphasis or make the sentence easier to phrase. I like bananas too. I too like bananas. It has little, it has a little emphasis. Therefore, remember if you want, you can use commas between. We have come to the end of our presentation. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a clear understanding about the uses of comma. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and alarm the notification bell. Then you will be notified with our latest grammar lessons. And please leave a like and don't forget to share this video with your friends. I hope to see you in another video. Bye for now.